Yeah, it's time. You're welcome once again to Oropujum 18. Um, I think I'm not seeing any new faces. Emmanuel Jacob, you're welcome. This is our Apple community. If you're joining us for the first time today, this is our Apple community and we'll be having our Oropujum 18 today. Kindly mute yourself to avoid distraction. Please mute yourself. Okay. Like I was saying, this is um, the Oracle community and we'll be having our Oracle Zoom 18 today. Orapu community is brought to you by Orapu. What is Orapu? Orapu is an international independent oral and public health information education and research organization. We work to improve access to health information, catalyze health career skills, strengthen oral and public health education and research. We promote favorable health outcome in resource limited contest. We call it Oraposium 18 because we've had series of sessions in the community and this is the 18th session going on in the community. It has been an interesting session. If you're joining us for today, we have our Oraposium every two weeks. So our next Oraposium will be in two weeks time at the same time, 8 a.m in the same platform. So you can invite your friends, tell people about it and also plan to join us in our next session. Okay, we have different um, sub-sessions in Orapu of where we have the Orapu community, we have the Orapu School, which is an Africans online dental and public health school. You can enroll for short programs, three months, two months, and you'll be certified our school is, um, is certified and um, it helps to keep you abreast with um, the latest trend in the industry. So you can do well to visit our website, www.orapu.org to know more of this, or you can send us a message if you are interested. We also have the Orapu journals and repository We have the Oropo College of Scholars. That is where one of, of the presenters who, who is coming out from and um, the presenter, um, the moderator speaking to you um, has passed through, okay? So we have the Oropo College of Scholars is a postgraduate college of oral and public health professional who we are passionate about contributing astutely to the society. Okay, we have the Oropo community where you are now. Where you are now, we conduct clinical meetings or and public health um, topics and discourse is being um, presented here. Okay, so this is the Oropo community. We have the Oropo Press where we publish oral and public health literature to improve access and utilization. Okay, so without um, wasting so much of our time, our presenter is already here. Our presenter is already here in the person of um, Miss Elizabeth Oji. Miss Elizabeth Oji will be speaking to us on on the topic digital dentistry and dental practice. Ms. Elizabeth Oji is a registered dental therapist who is a co-owner of Family Dental Clinic. She also works part-time at Family Healthcare Center, Wuro Sembe, and carries out outreach at the Mambila Plateau with the American missionaries at Gechan. She will be our presenter for today. Ms. Elizabeth Oji, you're welcome as I share your slide. 
Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'll be talking on digital dentistry and dental practice. So um, the first slide after the introduction slide is the presentation outline. So under the presentation outline, I'll be talking about introduction, history of digital dentistry, methods to incorporate digital dentistry, application process, advantages of digital dentistry, drawbacks to digital dentistry, conclusions, and then references. Sorry, can you hear me now? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes, Miss Elizabeth, we can hear okay. you now. Okay. Introduction. So when we hear about digital dentistry, we sometimes mistaken it to mechanical dentistry. So you know, mechanical, mechanical dentistry is actually the use of machines, but these machines are not automated. They're not actually linked to a server or something. So we might feel that because we own machines in our dental clinic, we are practicing digital dentistry. Well, that is not true. Digital dentistry goes beyond that. So for you to actually practice dig digital dentistry, you have to actually be a digital professional. So digital dentistry is the use of advanced technology to do what, to incorporate what, computer controlled components to effectively carry out dental procedures rather than the use of just mechanical or electrical tools. So your dental practice is an office or organization where you as a practitioner or a group of practitioners carry out dental procedures for your patients. So who is a digital dental professional? Is an expert who incorporates computer assisted methods in carrying out what, in carrying out practice effectively. Next slide is the history of digital dentistry. So how did we come about digital dentistry? It is dated back as far as 1971, and it was developed by, developed by Frank Coy Duret, and he's a French professor. He gave a groundbreaking presentation sometimes in 2000, sometimes 20 years ago, about dental practice and how you can be able to use computer-assisted design and computer-assisted manufacturing to improve dental practice. So ever since he started that groundbreaking role, so many innovations has improved and so many people embrace the use of digital dentistry to improve their practice. So over to the method to incorporate digital dentistry. The method to incorporate digital dentistry is for you to actually go for a training. So because we feel that we are dental professionals, we feel we know it all. Actually, digital dentistry is not actually taught in dental school. No matter the kind or level you've studied, we don't, it's not been taught. So you have to actually go back to a school that teach digital dentistry and you go and study digital dentistry. And one of the courses that you can study is the CAD CAM course. So the CAD CAM course is actually a very short course. And it's, um, it's a virtual training. Sometimes you don't really have to go in person. You can learn online. So it helps the digital pro um, professional to actually create designs, finish restorations, all in the in a single in a single atmosphere. So while the patient is sitting on the chair, you can actually carry out all these procedures while the patient is still sitting on the chair. Next is other digital dental courses. So we have intraoral scanner. So a lot of us would say we know intraoral scanner. We usually use it to take um, pictures of patient's mouth. So actually intraoral scanner goes beyond taking up pictures of patient's mouth. Intraoral dentistry can actually edit those pictures and give the, person, the patient a final procedure. Intraoral scanner can also notify a patient what would happen if he or she continues on the unhealthy path. So you can actually mimic a very bad carrier's tooth by using intraoral camera. So when you just 
take the current picture of the patient's tooth, you can manipulate it on the intraoral camera and come out with a, a tooth that will be worse if the patient does not adjust his or her lifestyle. So you can also do that with intraoral camera. And these are things you learn when you attend a digital dental course. So mastering CAD CAM. So mastering CAD CAM for someone who already know CAD CAM. So we know that every profession is linked. So you being able to master CAD CAM can be able to give you the flexibility in working in other departments. So when someone is looking for a, an advanced knowledge, a person with an advanced knowledge in CAD CAM, you will be you will, be, you will be selected because you understand how to use CATCAM. And also, from my research, I re even found out that some people actually use CATCAM to interpret and create designs remotely. So the, the professional would take a picture, send it to you remotely, you are in your house or you are in your office, and you can interpret that, create designs and all that using CATCAM, and then forward it back to the, to the professional. And you get paid for doing that. So you can actually work remotely if you understand CAD CAM effectively. Another um, thing you have to know is digital implantology. So digital implantology is actually different from the normal implants that we do in the clinic, where we just drill and attach um, artificial crowns and artificial tooth. So digital implant makes is a process whereby the implant you're attaching to the patient is digital. It's it fits the patient effectively. You are not guessing. You are not putting something that would not fit. When you attach a digital implant, it fits effectively without the patient complaining how it's painful or it doesn't fit or it looks different from the other. So digital implant takes a picture of the mouth, mimic the tooth exactly how the patient wants it. Let's say the patient has uh, malocclusion and the patient likes his teeth with malocclusion and the patient wants you to mimic that so with digital implant you can make any little change maybe changes in cost maybe changes in groups maybe changes in anything you can be able to mimic that using digital implant and give the patient close to perfect or rather perfect uh, implant that the patient wants and this implant is also connected to a computer when you are attaching it it's giving you response it's telling you you are doing it well you should move to the left you should move to the right you should go forward you should go backwards the patient is uncomfortable you have to stop let the patient take a rest so with this implant you can be able to do all this adjustment for your patient and get feedback from your from your patient and from the implants that you are also inserting for your patient Another thing is the ceramic processing and finishing. No, ceramic processing and finishing was not actually introduced, but digitally, where we actually do it uh, locally, but they felt like, okay, it needs to be introduced. So this is being able to finish, giving an artificial tooth, beautiful finish, beautiful finish. And when you see it, you would know, you wouldn't even tell that this is artificial, even if you're a professional. So you can use digital dentistry to actually achieve that effectively without actually making any mistake whatsoever. So the next is CAD software tutorial, including ExoCAD. Okay, for you to be able to practice CAD CAM, you need to learn CAD software. So computer assisted design can be done using a software called ExoCAD. So this ExoCAD, is a software that you can learn how to manipulate, you can learn how to use, so that you can offer your patient beautiful and perfect designs. So the next is 3D printing and digital dentures. So 3D printing is something that we know has been in existence, but is not really um, practiced in digital dentistry, but now it's done, where you can just take an impression digitally from a patient, and then you use a machine that rotates to actually create a 3D image that fits perfectly with the, in the patient's mouth. And also digital dentures also works as much as the CAD CAM, also work as much as the CAD software, where you can be able to do what? Attach dentures to your patient using digital means into the patient's mouth. Aligners and digital orthodontics. We know that if we own, if we own, um, our computer would see pay, um, when I say sales rep people or put that sell they sell aligners and these aligners they sell is not very effective because it every patient's mouth differs <clears throat> even if we are we are twins our teeth are not arranged in the same manner so if I just go to the market and just buy an aligner I might not really get what I want sometimes it gets sometimes patient complains that it gets painful 
sometimes, sometimes. So the aligners digitally now you cannot create aligners that fit perfectly. So you can take an impression. You can consult, you can construct an aligner for a patient that fits. So if the patient tooth is tilted 20 degrees, maybe his incisor is tilted 20 degrees away from the rest of the tooth. The digital dentistry can spot that out. This might not be something that you can really see with your eyes. But the, the fact that you're using digital dentistry, you can actually see that. Then when you are constructing your aligners, when you are constructing the incisor, you can, it can actually be tilted 20 degrees away from the rest of the tooth, of the teeth. And then you can be able to create a perfectly fit aligner for your patient. And also in digital orthodontics also, the same thing, the same law applies where orthodontics procedures are done digitally. Finally, the digital aligners, digital smile design. So what is digital smile design? I come to find out that patients would walk into a dental clinic and want to alter their smile. They don't like the way their smile looks. They want to change their smile to look like somebody else's smile. Maybe they know a celebrity. They want their smile to actually mimic that of that celebrity. So there's a digital smile design, which you can actually, it comes with a catalog where a patient can actually choose the design he or she wants. And then you take impressions, you take measurements, you do the designs, you show the patient how he or she would look after the procedure is done. The patient is fine with it. So next slide. We talk about non-digital, non-dental, dental dentistry courses. So there are some courses that if you want to be a digital dentist or digital dental professional, these courses are not founded or they are not rooted in dental designs like the ones we've seen earlier. These courses are very important. So one of them is called Canva. So you should have an intermediate knowledge of Canva. Canva has a free version that one can use. It also has a paid version where if you want to open up your options. So Canva is used to create different designs, different modes. So if a patient comes to your clinic and tells you, okay, I need this, I need that, you can be able to mimic that design on Canva using maybe your laptop or using maybe your tablet or your phone. Then you show the patient the finished product and say, okay, look at this. Do you think this is okay? I feel that this one is okay. You can create three different designs on, on Canva and show the patient and the patient will be happy. The next one is Office 360 Suite. So Office 360 Suite is something we have to master, which I know some of us know how to do, use the, your Microsoft, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, and the rest. So one should be able to master how to use that. The next thing one should be able to master is videography. So a, you can ask your patient to take make a video of his teeth and send to you. You should be able to edit it and manipulate it. Maybe while the patient is also in the dental clinic, you can make a video of the teeth these are animated objects you want to alter. So you can do that using videography if you have the basic knowledge of videography. So basic software knowledge. So there are so many software knowledge we can use to improve our practice and it's important that we learn them. Then next is communication skills. Communication skills is so underrated, but it's very, very important. Some clinics that have a lot of patients might, the only thing that might be taking the patients there is because of the practitioners sitting in that clinic have very good communication skills. So if you improve on your communication skills, you will improve on your dental practice. You'll be able to communicate everything to your patient, even what your patient is not saying. You'll be able to understand it and be able to bring it out in the limelight so that a patient can understand what he or she is not saying. And also, you should be able to explain to the patient what you are saying. Like digital dentistry is new, so there are so many terminologies and so many things that even we as professionals does not understand. Now, trying to manipulate us trying to talk to your patients about this might be difficult. Also, talking to a fellow professional about this is also difficult. That's why it's very important to learn communication skills and apply them. Then finally, is logistic skills. Logistic skills is you being able to carry out logistics in your clinic, being able to build your patient accordingly, because this is new. A lot of people don't really practice it, especially here in Nigeria. So one cannot have um, a, let's say, a blueprint print of what it looks like. So you should be able to know what you're offering your patient and how much you can actually build your patient and everything that is involved in carrying out that procedure. So application process. So 
how can we actually ap- apply digital dentistry in our practice? Open digital workflow. So what is open digital fl- workflow? Is being able to show your patient and other professionals transparently every procedure you're carrying out. Now, while you are doing S&P, your patient should be able to see it on the screen. While your patient is lying down, you can be able to tilt the camera and be able to tilt the screen and the patient should see everything you are doing. So that is so much transparency in your practice. So being open digital workflow is just basically having so much transparency in your, in your practice to both your patient and to also to other professionals. Next slide is IT solutions. Your clinic should be able to offer IT solutions. Let's say, for example, your patients, you want to know their birthday and when it's, it's important for you to send them message. So if you automate this, it can be able to tell you. Let's say your patient is at home. You want to be able to create, to send your patient his or her denture. You can, it's, it's all about creating an app for your clinic and the patient can be able to log into your app and see the process. How, when is leaving the clinic, when is getting to their destination and all that. Your clinic also should be able to know his or her patient effectively. Not when a patient is coming into the clinic, you'll be wondering, what did I actually do for this patient the last time? So, but with digital dentistry, you can be able to know everything in details because it's already automated and placed in your, in your software. Next is efficiency and accuracy. So digital dentistry makes every dental procedure efficient and accurate so that you don't have to make mistakes, you don't have to guess and all that. So it actually makes your fellow professionals to see your work. So if I'm sending a patient, let's say, for example, my patient traveled to another state and he or she cannot see me, he or she's been able to see a different dental professional, I can be able to sell, send to that professional accurate details about the patient down to dotting the I's and crossing the T's so that the patient, the professional would know what has been done and what is to be done next. The next one is enhanced experience and customer satisfaction. The whole thing about digital dentistry is for the patient to be satisfied and for the patient to have one in one in a blue moon experience that when he or she goes somewhere else, he or she might not really get that. And being able to uh, apply digital dentistry in your practice, you wow your patient whenever they come in. And wherever they are in in Nigeria, they will say, ah, there is a way this guy does his practice. I would love to go back there. So they will actually find their way back to you so that they can be able to receive that, that enhanced experience. So dental treatment expansion and future investment. So when you start um, practicing digital dentistry, you realize that you can be able to do more procedures than you have even imagined. And you can be able to build procedures or there's some hitches in dental practice that we are limited to. So if you're actually using digital dentistry, you can actually be pioneers and forerunners of some of these procedures we apply in our practice and say, okay, in dental practice, um, this and that and that is not existing. I wish it can exist. And because you use digital dentistry, you can actually make a prototype before you actually make it into, into a real um, form. You can actually help in future investment of dentistry. Immediate feedback. So with digital dentistry, you can just send, let's say you are a dental clinic and you want to work with a lab to produce a certain procedure. So the moment you send samples digitally to that um, professional, to that person in the lab, maybe a dental technologist, it gives you immediate feedback. You can be able to tell your patient if this would work immediately or if it wouldn't, or even if it wouldn't even work at all. So simplify the record keeping. You know, sometimes we have, like if you're in the north, you have a lot of Mohammed, Musa as people's names. And sometimes we might mix their folders and all that. But with digital dentistry, you can never mix patient folders. You can never mix up patients' procedures and all that stuff. So you can be able to store all your record keeping in a digitalized way. Next slide. Next slide is drawbacks, um, sorry, advantages of digital dentistry. So what are the advantages of digital dentistry? Okay, sorry, I just mentioned them. Sorry, I made a mistake. Drawbacks to digital dentistry. So there's a large gap between dentists and other dental professionals. So you might be a dental therapist or a dental technologist or a dental technician, and you might have gone 
out of your way to learn digital dentistry. And when you come back to your clinic, your senior colleagues would not allow you to practice what you have learned. So these are some of the drawbacks that we have to deal with in our practice. Also, the use of intraoral scanner requires high digital, high digital skills. So you have to actually acquire this knowledge most times to be able to use them. So maintaining a balance between simplicity, speed, and reliability is something you have to do. When you are starting out, it's very difficult. But as you progress and you gather experience, you find out that this is very easy for you to handle. And the high cost of initial setup. So setting up a digital dental clinic is more expensive than setting up a mechanical dental clinic. And also, you have to actually undergo training, send your staff for training and all that. So these are some of the drawbacks of digital dentistry. Next is the conclusion. So the dental professionals should be able to what, know the difference between digital dentistry and mechanical dentistry from what I've explained so far. And the, the digital dentistry has been a force to reckon with in our profession in the sense that when this becomes more um, used in our profession, it forces you and I to go and upgrade our skills or begin to lose out in our practice of digital profession. And also, when you use digital dentistry, you realize that your procedures are more functional, they are more aesthetically appealing, and they are efficient. Finally is the references, and that's all for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Elizabeth, for that um, great presentation you have there. I was able to pick something up, and I know that many of us did as well. Okay, now it's time for questions and contribution. As you already know, and for those joining us for the first time, this uh, our Raposium presentation has been scrutinized. It has been corrected. So the floor is open for your contribution and for questions. You can drop us a message in the group chat. If you can't um, speak to us, you're free to drop us a question in the group chat and we'll respond as soon as possible. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. Yeah, I want to say that I really enjoyed the symposium of the lecture given by Miss Elizabeth Oji. And um, I actually learned a lot and then many burdening questions. Um, I want to say that, you know, hitherto, we probably were thinking we are into digital dentistry, but now it's, it's very clear that it's um, all mechanical from her lectures. So I'm, I'm happy I got that insight. But some of the, the, the problems, I mean, before that, it, it, it shows that we all as dental professionals, particularly uh, uh, practicing clinicians should subscribe for the course or for the short um, courses she has just mentioned. So uh, we want us to have the link. I want her to probably give us or show us the links that we can enroll for such short-term trainings. That's that. And then um, some of the problems is that um, the ethics, um, I don't know you know, like in, in some profession, like in dental therapy profession, for instance, there are um, things that, uh, you know, the scope of our uh, work. So is it really um, part of the, 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 the training she just talked about or, or part of the practices? Um, you know, in some places, you probably might not be allowed to do that. So how do we um, reconcile that vis-a-vis the, the, the training, like uh, when she talked about orthodontics and um, some other things, you know, so there, there are specializations like that. So I want her to, to possibly uh, put a dividing line to us. Thank you very much. I'll ask some other questions as they come. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, sir. Um, I believe she has noted the question. She will respond to you soon. If there is any other question, please can you go ahead and speak to us or you can raise your hand using the emoji and you'll be called upon to speak. You can as well drop your questions in the chat box. It will be attended to your questions, your commendation, contribution, it's acceptable. Hello, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, uh, I just want to make a little contribution to what um, Madam uh, Elizabeth has just uh, deliberated this morning. Uh, it is a very, very wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, in fact, she really did try it really hard because uh, this digital dentistry, we are not even much care about with. Uh, most dental practitioners don't go into it, but it's really, really very, very important. Apart from having the knowledge, it helps us to have even more customers, especially people with uh, public and private uh, practice. You see a lot of patients coming to you because you've increased your digital workflow in dentistry. I really appreciate it because uh, digital dentistry application is very, very paramount. And apart from that, it helps us to make our patient realize that uh, we are more advanced. This is what happens in the advanced world, the advanced uh, countries. You see their treatment planning, their treatment designing, their prototype and typing setups are all digitalized from implant procedures to fabrications of customized uh, prosthesis. And using of these uh, devices, computer, make procedures easy and uh, readily uh, accessible for both uh, clinical procedures and laboratory uh, methodologies. Uh, what I just uh, want us to, to, to really understand and put into practice is that we just need to increase our digital uh, workflow by practicing digital dentistry. It's very, very important. I see this in one of my friends' uh, private setup. Gossi, I know everybody knows her here. Gospel, she's really trying, you know. And for that, because she imbibed this uh, digital dentistry in her workplace, you see she has a lot of patient work made easier for her. I think we need to do this. Uh, well done, Madam Elizabeth. You really did try it. Thank you very much for bringing this to, to our era because this is a now a digital era. Everybody now have to be computerized. Everybody have to be digital. Thank you very much. That's my contribution. Thank you so much, Ma. Mrs. Halima Mohammed for that um, contribution. Um, another thing she made mention of is um, patient inclusion. You know, when patients are involved in their treatment, it, it, it makes them fully understand. You, you know, when you talk about scaling and polishing, to repair, they'll be like, what is scaling and polishing? You know, they don't really understand. But when you put them through, when you carry them along in the process, they will they will eventually understand what it means and be able to explain to another person the, the same the, the procedure which he or she has undergone. So patient inclusion in, uh, in the digital dentistry is very, very important. And we should in, um, try as much as possible to inculcate that in, in our practice. There is any other question, we are still here to seek the question why Ms. Elizabeth answers um, some of the questions that was asked. There is any questions or further contribution, you are free to speak to us. And while we are waiting for other questions, our or a push, um, for those that are joining us for the first time today, this is the Orapo community. We have our Orapo sessions every two weeks and um, you are welcome. And also we, we, you can share our slides, you can share, our, our share the link to your friends, to your group chat, to enable more people to join. Um, our, our, our colloquium is coming up on 
February 10 to 11, 2023. I'll be sharing the link for which you will join the program. It's coming up next year. So we started early to publicize so that um, if you have any paper publication, any abstract, you can submit it. You can also um, send a message to any of us or in the group chat and it will be attended to. Okay. Okay. Is there any other question or contribution from the community members? Ms. Elizabeth, please go ahead with the answers, with the response to the questions. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Kelechi, for your questions. Actually, I don't know if I am permitted to drop the link. So when I get in touch with our lead mentors and our fellows, I will get back to you. I will drop, if they approve it, I might drop the link on the Oracle community. So that's that for, for that. And there are so many, there are so many courses that one can learn. It's even more than what I've actually listed. These are just the basic that one can learn. So in terms of ethics guiding our profession, actually there are just very few people currently there are just very few people currently practicing digital dentistry and i don't think there is a lot of ethics guiding it for now so it's something new that it has to actually be deliberated to know what is limiting a particular professional to do and what is not limiting so it's something that i feel for your dental practice is something you can learn to improve your practice and when it comes to the ethics guiding it, I think it's something that a whole lot of professionals have to sit down and deliberate on this issue. Because in terms of the aligners and all that, I know you need a technologist to do that for you. But when you have patients and you don't have a technologist to do that, what now happens? It's, it's the fact that there's a gap and nobody's feeling it. Oh, if you can learn it and um, apply it to dental practice, Practice while waiting for a response from the board or from the from the board to know if you are permitted to do that. I think that would be that would be beautiful. Okay, thank you, Miss Elizabeth. If there is any other clarification questions. You can go ahead and drop it in the group chat or you can signify and you'll be allowed to speak. And I think, Madam Elizabeth, uh, this uh, digital dentistry goes well with private practice. Because I saw people with private practice that has gone digital. And if you see the flow of patients there, because everything there is so sophisticated, treatment exhaustive. You see, a lot of things are very, very uh, clear, clean, good, you know. It goes well with private practice, but... In as much as government will come into this and the board will expand the work of a dental therapist, we can be licensed to do more. But it goes well with a private practice. When you are in a private practice, you can go and make an advanced uh, a, a, a readings, advanced uh, studies. You go, you, you have an advanced uh, certificate in such trainings, you come and put it in your private practice and you become well. But with government practice, you know, these uh, the doctors, uh, therapies, whatever, dichotomy, the, the area of work, you know, such limit us a lot with public practice. But it goes really well, very buoyant with private practice. I've seen it and it's really booming. When the when I saw the when I was in a dental surgery in Abuja, it was comprehensive, hundred percent digitalized. 
So even the card there, you know, you can you can imagine the price because patients are not are not even focusing on price or whatever. What they are after is satisfaction, satisfaction from the beginning to the end, from the reception to the surgery. So it goes well with public and private practice. People with private practice, this is an advanced stage for them to 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 increase their 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 services by providing an advanced setup this is what i have to say thank you thank you so much um mrs halima mohammed yeah most private practices um um use um digital dentistry but it's not as as though we can't um inculcate that in our public practice you know one thing about dentistry is you you work together as a team so even with um um the uh, private practice you can also employ capable hands in different um fields that can help um bring the dream or the vision to limelight, okay, it's not something you can do alone. Even if you go through the processes, even if you go through the trainings, you can also invite or employ people that has gone through the same training or different training that are similar to the vision or the goal of um, the organization. And you can employ them to help boost um, the organization or help um, facilitate um, the organization Okay, so it, it can also be inculcated in our public practice. It's just that, I don't know, maybe when we would do that, we must have even migrated to another yes. realm. But Madam Chika, you are correct. You are correct. Why I'm saying it's not that much applicable with public practice is, you know, government standard facilities, yeah. dilapidated, all these yeah, things exactly. that are happening with the government setup. That's it. That's just it. You might and go and have a training, well. and at the end of the day, it will not be useful in the public practice because the facilities are not there. The place is not even hygienic. You know, all these things, if you go to public practice, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not encouraging. It's not encouraging. The knowledge will not be adequately judiciously used because there are no facilities to make even use of those applications. Even no government now are trying. I've seen them imbibing the HM, uh, HIMS, the Health Information Management System there. They are doing it, but still it's not adequate because they still need to uh, create and involve more practitioners that, uh, that know how to do or where to go about with these uh, facilities, the computer system, computerized these things. And this thing needs uh, special trainings, as Mother Elizabeth has mentioned. We just have to go outside our field and then train and then come back and then apply it in a private uh, or public uh, setup. But still, maintenance, continuation of the process, that is just it with public uh, practice. But I see it more in the light with private practice. You can bring more hands to come and join, bring more of technologies, prosthodontists, all those uh, practitioners. You can bring them in your practice setup. And you, you were having that... Uh, knowledge yourself so everything is clear with i see it more in the light of private uh, setup than uh, public because even there might start but continuation of the process thank you yeah continuation and maintenance too thank you very much um, mrs salima that's a very um great contribution okay um from the chat boards, Dr. Kelly Chanel, but so I'm impressed with the presentation and in-depth knowledge of the presenter. Our Apple community is the place to be. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you very much, sir, for always joining us in our presentations from the beginning of this Arapujum up until this 18th Arapujum. We appreciate you, sir, and um, we look forward to seeing you again and again. Thank you so much. Ojik. Okay, Chuku Rosalind, she said, today is our first time. You're welcome. You're very much welcome to the Orapu community. She said she, she's really impressed and that she learned a lot. Thanks to the presenter. Thank you, too, for joining us. And um, we encourage you to help us share and invite your friends to join the community. 
Thank you very much. I can see some persons typing. If you have any other question, we have just a few minutes to round up this session. You can go ahead and um, speak to us. And to our presenter, thank you very much. You did a great job. You delivered as always. Thank you. And to everyone that joined us today, I, I can see all of us. Thank you for joining us to, in, our, in our presentation today. Thank you to the founder and the lead mentor of the Orapu community and the Orapu at Soho. Thank you very much, Dr. Adamu, for the privilege you've given to the fellows the members of Oropo College of Scholars, the fellows of Oropo College of Scholars and the community members to, um, to be educated and to be enlightened in oral and public health related um, issues and topic. It has been an amazing session since the start of this um, um, Oroposium. We appreciate you, sir. Thank you for the wonderful work you're doing. We pray that the Lord will strengthen you. Thank you so much. I can see Emmanuel Jacob, Mr. Silas, Chidima Jonathan. We can, I can also see uh, one of our, our guard, Dr. Omale Johnson. You're welcome, sir. Mr. Iba, you're welcome. Likita Daniel, you're welcome. Mr. Raphael Adania. Ogechuku, okay, you're welcome. Ibi Ibubi, you're welcome. And of course, Dr. Kelechi Anaboso, you're welcome, sir. And our presenter, Ms. Elizabeth, you're welcome. Finally, Ms. Halima, you're welcome. And I remain your presenter, Ms. Nguchika Charity. Please don't forget our next oraposium is coming up in two weeks' time. So don't forget. Even if you forget, we'll be sharing the flyers in our social media handles. You can check us up on Facebook, on YouTube, on Twitter. Follow us all across all social media platforms. And also, if you want to get the recordings, the video of what we just did and the previous presentations, if you want to, you know, get updated in what is happening in, in the Oracle community, you can check our page on YouTube at Oracle. There you can get... Um, many recordings, many live sessions of everything we, we have done in this community. And um, I'm sure you will love it. Okay, thank you so much, everyone. I have a few other things. Okay, I can see messages in the group chat. Mr. Emmanuel Jacob said, actually, I'm just joining now for the first time, but I'm really, really happy it's a place to be for adding more knowledge to us. Thank you all. Thank you. We are really, really happy to have you with us, Mr. Emmanuel Jacob. We hope to see you in our next presentation. Likita Daniel said, I joined the Oropusium today for the first time, and I must say that I have been missing a lot, honestly. Of course, you have been missing, but please do not miss again. So just keep a date with us every two weeks, and um, be sure to be going home with plenty knowledge free free knowledge is free of charge it is it, not something it's just that do you have data is the question if you have data you can join us and um subscribe and join us in our presentations he, he says he appreciate the knowledge received thank you very much and we hope to see you next we have so many first timers today and i'm excited that um there are about three or four first timers in the house our one of our orgas, Dr. Omale Johnson, said, Good morning, everyone, and thanks for the in depth delivery. Miss Oji, I want to agree with Hajia Halima for her submission. How can the public practice also imbibe digital practice in their services? Miss Elizabeth, the question is for you. How can the public practice also imbibe digital practice in their services? As we Randolph, can you please answer the question? Okay. Yeah. Just like Miss Mrs. Halima has said, it's all about continuous um, workflow. So they can start. It's easy for them to start. Someone can give them a quotation and they would pay and everything gets supplied. But continuous workflow, continuous maintenance and all that, 
it's the most difficult thing in a government um, or a public press at all. Now, one thing I know that can be done is after they've sent out their dental professionals for trainings, if they can be able to allow a private sector to manage this digital aspect of dentistry, this private sector can be able to do what? Can be able to make sure everything is working effectively as they want. Because if it's a government thing, we know how our our government is in Nigeria. Many things don't really work as we want. So, but if the private sector is managing it, they are making sure that all the equipments are up to par. They get a commission from all the patients that they've seen. I think that's a way that they can make sure this system continue to do what to exist and exist up to the optimal way it's supposed to exist. I think that's what I have to say. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Elizabeth. I hope um, she has done justice to the question. Um, if there is still any other contribution or questions, you can drop it in the group chat or clarification, you'll be clarified. Thank you once again, everyone, for joining us today. Hope to see you next time in uh, Orapujum 19. Do have a great weekend. Bye.